Dinder Pain is back. Comment down below, what did you think of this film, The Holdovers? Are you a fan of Alexander Payne's movies? Which one is your favorite of all of his films? Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Today we're talking about the 2023 holiday comedy drama film, The Holdovers. A cranky off-putting history teacher at an all-boys remote prep school called Barton in New England is forced to remain on campus over the Christmas holidays with a troubled student with no place to go and a sad recovering school cook. Hello, Mary. I heard you got stuck with babysitting duty this year. How'd you manage that? You know, you used to be a student, right? Yeah, that's why he knows how to inflict maximum pain on us. Oh. And I thought all the Nazis were hiding in Argentina. Stifle it, Tully. First of all, I do enjoy Alexander Payne's films. I really like Election. I love Sideways. The Descendants is a really great film. Nebraska is fantastic. So I was anticipating this movie and... This is a great, wonderful, holiday, Christmas, feel-good sort of inspirational film. This feels like it's going to become an instant, like, Christmas classic. I can see a lot of people re-watching this movie from year to year now because it has that kind of feel-good movie, that also grainy, nostalgic, 1970s filmmaking style and tone to this movie that makes it feel nostalgic and warm it succeeds in so many amazing ways the directing is fantastic alexander Payne is back and i absolutely loved this movie i think this is one of his best directed films he's ever done that is awesome the editing and the fading it gave it that really nice 70s kind of movie tone to it and then it had at the center of it a great character piece that is focused on the relationships between the characters and i love when movies can do that successfully and this is no different than any of alexander payne's films he's done in the past this is such a great fun nice sweet at sometimes romantic, at sometimes heartbreaking, at sometimes tragic, sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's really hilarious, kind of coming of age holiday movie. And I loved it. I thought it was one of the best films of this year so far. It is definitely gonna be going on my list. I've got a little list. I've got a little list. And I'm surprised, but I'm pleasantly and happily surprised. The acting is amazing. The three lead performances are magnificent. Like, give all these three an Oscar nomination. I deserve an Oscar for that performance. Paul Giamatti hasn't been this good in years, years. He is drop dead amazing in this film. What a performance. What a weird, funny, wacky role that he nails absolutely to the T. Dominic Sessa, this is his first on-screen performance and he is a revelation. What a fine, what a fantastic performance. I thought he was so good at being that brooding teenager, but also having that layered performance of like, there's so much more going on with him than just like, I'm a moody teen. There's a really nice, subtle, yet fun and youthful, energetic performance at the center of this character that I just absolutely fell in love with. And then Divine Joy Randolph, who is so good in this movie. Like this should be a best supporting actress, maybe even win. And I thought she was incredible. What a heart-wrenching, soul-crushing, beautiful, and yet devastating performance from her in this film. And you so feel for her character. Alexander Payne has an amazing eye to film his actors and just pull these great performances from them while making them look like great, amazing movie star character actors at the same time. I think that's one of the reasons why all of these great amazing performers want to work with this director. The cinematography is pretty good. There's some great scenes, don't get me wrong, but it's a very simple movie. It's really kind of stuck on this campus. It's so simple. It is a straightforward, like, school film. And it kind of reminds me of those other films that are sort of shot like this, like Harold and Maude and School Ties, Dead Poets Society, Scent of a Woman, 
and even one of the most recent Best Picture winner films from a couple years ago, Coda. This film feels like all of those movies combined into this like Christmas feel good holiday film that works. And I didn't think it would, but it works on almost every level. The production design is great. The costumes are awesome. It really depicts that late 1960s, early 1970s time and era so well. The tone is fantastic and it has a really nice pace to the movie. I would say it's about 10 minutes too long and really it could have been cut down to a solid two hour movie, but still that didn't detract it from it, this movie being an amazing, entertaining, fun punch of a time. The comedy was great. It was pretty funny at times, especially like Paul Giamatti riffing with like all the students and back and forth with uh, Dominic Sessa. Sir, I don't understand. That's glaringly apparent. I can't fail this class. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. And their dynamic and their relationship and chemistry between these two leads is awesome. It is the heart and soul of this film. You're the heart and soul of this team, Bobby. And they definitely made me tear up a couple of times between the two of them, and especially also when you mix in Divine Joy Randolph into the mix. All three of them just had me going at times where I was laughing, I was crying, I was just feeling all these great, wonderful emotions that connected to these characters and to this really simple story, yet effective story and storytelling. The dialogue is amazing and the bantering back and forth is so great to watch. It's absolutely entertaining. Very much a rewatchable movie. It feels very nostalgic. It has that nostalgia feel to the film and it just pulls you in and keeps you there. Mwah. Things about this movie that really hold it back from me being like a full on masterpiece is it's a bit predictable at times and it feels a little safe. For Alexander Payne specifically and his genre and his style and tone specifically in his filmmaking, this movie does feel safe and it feels a little bit reserved where he is usually very out there and he does things a bit differently and wacky. This is much more of a return to a safer kind of film, which is fine, but it doesn't feel as boundary pushing as a lot of his other movies do. This is a nostalgic, feel good, loving, fun, lighthearted, but also pretty dark at times too. And it balances that tone so well, kind of a film. If you don't see it in theaters, it is worth it. Video on demand and watching at home because it is a movie that I think a lot of people are gonna like and it feels very crowd pleasing as well. But I think critics are gonna enjoy it too because it is such a well-crafted film from a masterful filmmaker. You will call me master. Before I get my final thoughts and grade for this film, please make sure you click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Comment down below, what did you think of The Holdovers? What did you think of this Alexander Payne film? What is your favorite Alexander Payne movie? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for doing that. Definitely worth checking out, and I give this movie two thumbs up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give The Holdovers an A. Thank you so much for checking out Mr. Teach Film Preach. Come back and check out some other review videos like Next Goal Wins, the new Taika Waititi film, Napoleon, the new Ridley Scott film starring Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby, and the new film from Emerald Fennel, Saltbird. Have a great day, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Stay focused. Stay awesome. And as always, let's get taught.